welcome back to They Did What, your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories, where I go with them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today I'll be doing part six, continue on, continuing on from the story I did a couple hours ago, all about the guy who found out his girl, his wife was cheating on him in the honeymoon with another girl. And where things left off, he uh, his, his soon-to-be ex-wife is uh, weeks away from giving birth, but it seems like uh, a thing is in the works to have her, she's going to sneak off pregnant into another country, actually, and uh, it's a big freaking mess for this guy, and it seems like the mother's once again plodding along, so I'm going to continue on where things left off. It says here, I told my mom to calm down. I'm not, pick, I'm not picking anyone up. Jane is sleeping in the same room with Jill because Amy is in my old room with the crib with her son. The only bed available for Jane is in Amy's old room. If they're still lovers, they're still lovers. Who cares? I went on to explain to my mom that, that my son needs my approval to get a passport. Jill's not taking him anywhere when he needs a passport to go, but she can take him out of the country while she's still pregnant. Uh, Jill was due in about a month. She'd have to spend hours of travel time to get from here to Guadalupe. Is she capable of doing that? My mother answered that Jill is very big. She looks like she's ready to give birth any minute. I told her Guadalupe is a three and a half hour flight from Miami, and she would first have to fly to Miami from where we live. My mother asked, "Would I want to change? Cha- would I want to ch- chance going into labor on a three and a half hour?" Yeah, chance that over three and a half hour flight over the Atlantic with nowhere to land. Jill would have to be insane to make that trip. Um, again, her emotions are doing all the thinking, my friend. Not a lot. You're being logical. She's being emo- She's going to be emotional. My mother insisted that the only way to guarantee my son remains here is for me to come and get Jill. Wow, what a perfect situation for Mom and Jill. Jill be so happy. Jill wants to be with me, not with Jane. All these problems will be solved if I just take Jill back. We'll be a happy family once again. Jill loves me and no one else. Jill will never go outside the marriage again. My mother is certain of that. Yeah, Mom, because you're such a track, you're such an honest woman yourself, giving your history in the diaries. This is from a woman, my mother, who constantly cheated on her husband throughout their marriage. I told my mother that there was no way Jill and I were going to remain married. But I don't want any surprises. If Jill's planning to return to the crib with Jane after my son's birth, great. But if that's their plan, I need to prepare to raise my son on my own, alone. He's not going with them. I got the phone of my mother and did some research. Airlines bar international travel for women after a certain point in their pregnancy. Some bar international travel within after 28 weeks. Some after 35 weeks. They may also want a doctor's letter approving travel. Depending on the airline, after talking with my mother and from what I learned about pregnancy and international travel, I was less concerned about Jill flying to Guadalupe before she gives birth. I don't think Jill would, would, would risk going into labor on the plane. I don't think they'd let her on the plane as pregnant as she is. Well... Even if there's a 99% chance of that not happening, are you going to still risk the 1% chance? And remember, she's not going to think about this logically because they have emotion-based uh, CPUs and operating systems and all that. Also, our insurance won't cover in a normal delivery in Guadalupe. We don't have worldwide health insurance coverage. If my uncle's right and Jill return to get insurance to cover pregnancy and birth expenses, she won't have that coverage in Guadalupe. The next day, Amy called. Same story. Jane is hoping to take Jill and our baby back to Guadalupe. Oh, uh, yes, Amy's a p- part of this plot. That I better come get Jill before I lose her and my son. Jill loves me. There's no other men or men. There's no other man or men. Well, of course there's no other man or men because we know what she prefers. Uh, she didn't cheat on me. Jane's a woman for health, for heaven's sake. Jill and I are the baby. Jill and I and the baby should just get on with our lives. Amy knows I still love Jill. I better come for Jill before Jane convinces Jill to take my son to live in Guadalupe. Amy continues that Jane is planning to be there in the delivery room with Jill. Like Jane is the baby's father or something. Since I wasn't going to be there, Jill originally asked Amy to be there in her delivery room. Not anymore. Now that Jane is here, Jill wants Jane in their delivery room instead of Amy. Amy started crying and said she loves Jill. (laughs) Jill and Amy have been best friends for 20 years, since elementary school. More like sisters. I should be in the living room with Jill. But if not me, it should be Amy. Not Jane. Jane is here effing everything up. Jane is trying to take Jill away from the people who love her. Jane is a horrible person. Oh, I'm not going to say Jane is in an a-hole on multiple fronts. But guess what? So are you. So is your sister Jill and mom. Shit, what's grandma like? 
Uh, I thought she liked Jane. Amy said Jane was fun to be around in Guadalupe, but Jane has no business being here. Not only is she trying to break up Jill in my marriage, but she wants to take Jill and my baby back to Guadalupe with her. The BIT has also put herself between Amy and Jill. I thought this is not going to end well. Cat fight. Amy continued that she and I have to save Jill from Jane. If I would just get off my high horse and come get Jill. I love the shaming tactics. They never stop. Jane and all the problems she created would go away. Jill wants me. If Jill was with me, Jill won't give Jane another thought. Jill understands she made a big mistake. She learned her lesson. Like you, sister, have learned your lesson from all the cheating you've done. Uh, there was no infidelity since Jane is a woman. There are no other men. I should get over this stupid shit about Jill being unfaithful. <sighs> Never ceases to amaze me. Uh, Jill and I both are both still young. We have our whole lives ahead of us. Can she can uh, she tell Jill that I'm coming to get her? No, bitch. I said no. Yeah, you do have your whole lives ahead of you. You're 24, 25 years old, man. You can end this, get through this bullshit, have your son, and move on. I said, uh, poor jealous Amy. Now, Amy knows a little bit about how it feels to be betrayed by someone she loves. Amy has nothing to say. I told her I'm never coming to get Jill. I asked Amy if Jill ever got a visa for Guadalupe. Amy said that when she was there in September, it was three months after Jill and I arrived for her honeymoon. Jean and Jill were very confused about Jill having problems because she didn't have a visa. To stay legally, Jill needed a visa. So Jill flew back to Miami with Amy when Amy returned from the trip. Amy returned home, but, but Jill stayed in Miami and got a visa through the French consulate there. Then she returned to Guadalupe. I said Jill would have to pr prove that she was able to support herself in Guadalupe to get a visa. Amy said Jill had a letter of employment from the resort where Jane worked, the one we stayed at our honeymoon. Jill's French was good, and the resort liked her hi liked hiring Americans. So Jill was all set. She had a visa and a job waiting in Guadalupe. She can return to Guadalupe anytime. Aha. Uh -huh. Is that what Jill's planning, to return to the Caribbean? Amy said, Jill is waiting for me. If I don't get our marriage back on track, Jill might very well take her son and leave with Jane. But no one wants that except Jane. I better get Jill before she runs off with Jane. Uh-huh. Jill, Amy, and my mother were setting up a pick-me scenario. I'm supposed to worry that Jill will pick Jane to be with, so I'll get jealous and want Jill to pick me up instead of Jane. Jill, Jane, Amy, Mom, I'm getting... Mixed up with all these fucking names here. I'm sure you guys are too. Uh, the master manipulators at work. The puppet masters. The puppet master gang. I told Amy that it's a choice between Jill picking Jane or be, be with me. Jill should definitely pick Jane. I'm out of the running. Jill gave birth to our son early, early morning, January 23rd. Holy shit. She's early. And it's a few days ago. Well, congratulations, Papa. You have a son. A few weeks early. He is perfect. Jane helped Jill in the living room while Amy, my mother, and I sat in the waiting room. Oh, I'm sure that was fun being with the, with the harpy hens. Jill's mother was also there, not her father. My father refused to come. He didn't want to be anywhere near my mother, even the birth of his grandson. My son arrived without any complications. Well, that's great to hear, Dad. I sat with my newborn son in a rocking chair in a room beside the nursery when Jane came to take the baby. I'd be like, bitch, get the fuck out of here. She apologized for her part in breaking up our marriage, but told me Jill loved her, not me. It was for the best. I didn't want to be with someone who loved someone else. Jane asked for the baby. She wanted to bond with him, and I told her to fuck off. <laughs> Good. Tell her to chase after some nurse. I'm sure there's plenty of nurses at, at the hospital that uh, Jane can fool around with and have fun with. She'll forget about Jill real quick. When they settled Jill in her room, a nurse came by. Here we go, nurses. A nurse came for my son to take Jill. Talk to Jill. To know to take Jill. I walked by her room and looked in. Jill was feeding the baby while while Jane sat next to the bed. They were smiling and, t and talking like two happy new parents. I asked the nurse when I could have my son back. She said she'll bring the baby to me when he's finished eating. She did. There's nothing like holding your baby and watching him sleep. I could do that forever. Well, bro, congratulations. But you're going to have an uphill battle now with all this other bullshit and drama. But you'll get through it. When I arrived at the hospital the next morning, Jill was feeding our son. Jane was in the, in the room next to her. I asked the nurse when I could have my son. She said when Jill's finished feeding him, she'll, she'll bring the boy to meet me. I'll bring the boy to me. She went into the room and told Jill that I was outside. Jill asked the nurse to tell me to come into the room with her. She and I can be with the baby together. 
she'll have Jane leave. I said, that's okay. I just want to be with my son alone. The nurse also told me Jill and the baby will, will likely be released this afternoon. As soon as her doctor gets there to sign the release paperwork, probably sometime after lunch. While I waited for Jill to finish feeding my son, I called my mother. She and Amy were on their, on their way to the hospital. Now that I'm a father, have I finally come to my senses? <laughs> they are relentless. Don't I want Jill and my new baby to come home with me? My mother and Amy will come with us to help. They'll tell Jane to get lost. Can we tell Jill that I finally regained my sanity? We're a family again. Oh, hooray. I repeated that. Not, it's not going to happen. Jill's not coming home with me ever. Tell Jill to pick Jane. But after Jill at my mom's, but after Jill at my mother's, but after Jill's at my mother's, she wrote, wrote this wrong. Something, I'm going to skip this whole fucking sentence because it was all messed up. And, and see Jill and Jane. I try to ignore them while I get to, to know my son. Jill and the boy left the hospital that afternoon. I went to see my son that night. Jill walked to talk, wanted to talk. I told her I wasn't interested in anything she had to say. She told me the boy's pediatrician saw him in the hospital, but she has to make a follow-up appointment. Did I want to come? I told her to make the appointment and have my mother let me know what, when it is. I think I'll think about coming. Jill went back to her room with Jane and left me with the child. Amy came over to talk. A whispered conversation. She told me she told, she told Jane to go home. Jane came to help with Jill with the birth. The boy is born. Time for Jane to leave. Jane said, Jill wants you to stay. Jill told Amy to leave Jane alone. She likes Jane being here. Amy, all, Amy asked me again to take Jill and the baby home with me. Jill will leave with me, will leave with me in a second. That's all that Jill wants. Don't I realize if I don't take Jill back, that she'll take the baby and I won't see him again. Again, the harpy puppet masters at work. I told Amy... That can Jill can do what she wants, but she's not taking my boy to the Caribbean. Jill made the appointment with the pediatrician for the Friday morning after the birth. Last Friday, I decided to meet them at the doctor's office. I want to know everything about my son, and I don't want to find out, find out about him through Jill. Amy drove Jill and my son to the doctor's. No Jane. While we were in the waiting room, waiting to see the doctor, Jill asked me if I was ready to be a family again. I would never have any reason to doubt Jill's love for me again. She'll be the perfect wife and mother. That's all she wants. She effed up. She knows that. But we have a son, a new life, and we should start together a new life together. Relentless. I was curious how Jill envisioned this fa fantastic family, our new life together. I asked her where Jane would fit into all this. She said, Jane's just a friend now. Whenever it was, bet what was between them and Guadalupe is over. Jane is talking about moving here and finding a job. Maybe my uncle can give her a job. <laughs> you gotta be shitting me. Even if you took her back, which of course you're not going to do, and you, you obviously know that, you think that you're, she, she thinks you're going to allow her to be friends with her? Maybe she can help with the baby. I said, maybe she can live with us and help with our son. Jill smiled from ear to ear and said, that'd be great. She's going to suggest that, but didn't know how I'd feel about Jane living with us. It'd be the best arrangement. Jane would be a good friend to both of us. I started laughing. I couldn't help it. I asked Jill if Jane was also going to give me massages with happy endings. <laughs> I told Jill that she and I are divorcing. I will support my son, but not her. It's an at-fault divorce date, and she's at fault. I like how you said that. Can she get her teaching job back? Jill said she called the principal when she knew uh, she won't be back to teach last fall. She could probably get a job teaching there at another school. Elementary teachers are in short supply. But Jane wants to return to Guadalupe. She may do that. She was offered a job at the resort. She could probably get a t job teaching English to school children in Guadalupe. So she can support herself and her son there. With uh, monetary assistance for our son from Mia, of course. I'm really uh, leaving her no choice if we don't reconcile. Yeah, but uh, you need permission to get the passport from me. Uh, Jill asked, can I get past my hurt ego and do the right thing? Hurt ego. I'll never regret having a family together again. We will all be happy. It's the best thing for her, my son, especially for me. Jill knows I still love her. She certainly loves me and no one else. Really, because your actions communicate something different, honey. If I still think Jane is a problem, Jill will tell her to go back to Guadalupe. Jill looked at me hopefully. Amy also looked at me hopefully. I told Jill she can go wherever she wants anytime she wants, but my son is staying here. She told me I can't tell her what to do with her son. She's his mother. Babies goes with their mothers. 
was I planning to kidnap the boy? I told him I don't need to do that. He needs a passport to enter Guadalupe. To get a passport, I have to sign the application along with her, and I'll never sign the application. He's not going to the Caribbean. Jill turned red and said I was lying. Infants don't need a passport. Uh, yeah, they do. He'll be traveling with his mom. What were they going to do? Take her baby away from her at the airport in Guadalupe? I told her that's exactly what they'll do. They want him. They, they won't let him in without a passport. Talk to her lawyer or do some research. Jill didn't say a word to me at, at the rest of the doctor's visit. Didn't say goodbye when they left either. She was fuming. Amy couldn't stop. Could not stop smiling. I called my lawyer from the car after I left the doctor's. I told him that Jill was planning to go back to the Caribbean with my son. He says she can't legally do that. I told him. I told him Jane, his, her girlfriend, is still is from a state in the southern USA. Jane told Jill that me and me that when they first met last June on the beach that Jill could take my son and go to Jane to live with Jane's folks or go someplace else we have to we have to prevent that aha uh -huh, there you go she may not go on a plane to the Guadalupe but she could go to somewhere else in the states don't need a passport for that he told me going out of the country is one thing without my permission a judge won't allow that before a custody is established and then only if Jill gets sole custody Jill taking my son to another state is something else Jill and I have no custody agreement her lawyer refused to engage in talks about the custody. Until custody is resolved, a judge may, may say Jill can take our son where, anywhere she wants in the U.S. Going to a judge now may give Jill ideas. What a load of fucking shit. Especially if Jill finds out the judge won't stop her from taking my son away from me as long as they remain in the U.S. of A. We'll fight it, but don't expect any judge to ever find, find in favor of a father in, dis, in a dispute with a mother over child care. Here we go. Shocker, shocker, shocker. The mother would be completely incapable of caring for the child before a judge would consider removing the child from the mother's care. The lawyer told me to wait and see what Jill does. If it looks like Jill is going somewhere with, with, with my son, we'll get before a judge and try to stop her. I'll always know where she is because she'll need the health insurance my uncle provides. Also, she'll want me to send her money. Jill won't just disappear with my son. Let's wait and see what happens before we get a judge involved. My sister Amy called me Sunday morning. She has to. She has to. She and her son could come li come live with me. <laughs> Your a hole sister wants to come live with you with her with her newborn child. Are you kidding me? I asked her why. She said our mother Jill, Jane, and Amy have been taking turns helping out with the two babies, Alex's and Amy's son, and my son. This morning, Amy went, went to change my son's diaper. Jane stopped her and told Amy that Jane and Jill were able to take care of their child themselves, and didn't need Amy's help. Jill, Jane, and their son don't need any assistance from outsiders. I don't know about you guys, but you can't find any streaming service or network that provides crazy stories like I, the ones I get here, right? You know, all these streamers are always looking for an edge or an advantage and all the other ones because it's so, such a hyper-competitive business. Fuck, get, the, get these stories. Well, then again, I'd be out of business then. Or they should hire me. Anyway, uh, Amy said that she had enough of this bitch. She slapped Jane as hard as she could. Ooh, girl fight. I described Jane earlier as a pretty girl. Uh, my sister is also a pretty girl. Gr girl but has about 4 to 5 inches and at least 15 pounds on Jane. Amy is also 4 months pregnant. Amy said Jane doesn't fight fair. Amy ex expected hair pulling, punches, and slaps, but Jane bites and scratches too. They rolled around the floor fighting while Jane and her mother yelled at them. She's four or five months. She's she's pregnant, and they're fighting and rolling around the ground. Uh, when they were too exhausted to continue fighting, they started calling each other uh, names. Amy has a bite on her shoulder and scratches on her arms and face. She's a black guy, but Amy said Jane looks worse. Amy can bite and scratch too. <laughs> you know, I've talked to bouncers and cops, and they all say the same thing. They would rather break up a fight between two guys, guys that have training, boxing training, martial arts training, than two girls that are an unpredictable cat fighting, hands going everywhere, biting, scratching, clawing, spitting, all that type of stuff any day of the week. I asked why she'd risk her pregnancy by getting into a fight. She said she didn't think Jane would do anything about the slap, but Jane didn't hit Amy in the stomach or do anything else that would harm the baby. At least Jane has that much decency. Our mother tried to mediate between Jane and told her that Jill, Jane, and their son were now a family. They could take care of themselves. 
Jill didn't say anything. Didn't dispute what Jane said. My mother was so stunned, she didn't say anything. After 20 years of treating Jill as a daughter, they were telling my mother she no longer wanted. She was no longer wanted or needed. So Amy wants to move in with me. Jane is crazy and doesn't want anyone else near Jill or my son. Eventually, uh, eventually Jane will tell me I'm not allowed to see their son. Amy wants to get get away from that nut that nutcase. The whole situation at my mother's is just insane and Jane there. Yes, it is insane. And that poor little boy Alex isn't seeing all this madness. And now this your son is now the baby amongst this madness. Amy says she has nowhere else to go. Alex won't consider reconciliation. He won't even let Amy in his house when she drops or picks up the son. Our father's not taking talking to Amy. He thinks Amy knew, knew about our mother's cheating, so he's angry at Amy. Amy told me she didn't know about her mother's infidelity. Dad is angry at her for no reason. I told Amy that my mother wrote that in her diaries that Amy knew about the mother was cheating. Amy didn't say anything. And just blushed. Caught in another lie. Of course. I'm surprised any of these pathological liars are still able to blush. I told Amy I'd think about letting her and my nephew live with me. I'll let her know. We got off the phone. I want to talk to Alex and the others about this. We were meeting for lunch in a few hours of our weekly Sunday support session. Alex, my dad, and Uncle Jake, and me. I'll bring up my situation at my mother's then. My mother called a little late that morning. She told me my stubbornness was making it impossible for everyone. Oh, again, it's the man's fault. She doesn't understand why I haven't forgiven Jill for her foolishness. My mother can understand why my father is mad at her. My sister is not his daughter. She had an affair with her vice principal. She can understand why Alex is mad at Amy. She got pregnant in the Caribbean. She saw other guys in college. But my father and Alex should forgive their wives and take them back. But at least she understands why they're mad at their wives. But she doesn't understand me. My son is my son. Jill didn't have an affair with another man. Don't I understand that all girls try a girl sooner or later? <laughs> well, you know, there may be some truth to that nowadays. But if they want to do that when they're not with another guy, another boyfriend, or a husband or fiancé, fine, go have all the girl-on-girl uh, -girl loving all you want. But if you're with another guy who believes that you love him and you're doing this and you're cheating on him, then that's that. And the guy can handle the situation accordingly. Bitch. Uh, she didn't fall out of love with me. Jill doesn't want another man. She was goofing around with a girl. Come get my wife and son and this stupidity. F you, Mom. I should get over it and grab Jill and my baby before it's too late. Everyone agrees that's the best thing. I told I don't agree with that's the best thing. Taking Jill back is the worst thing. Not happening. My mother called, called me an idiot, and hung up the phone. My mother's world continues to spin out of control. When our support group met for lunch that day, I told Alex and the others that Amy wants to bring her son to live with me. She's afraid of Jane. She thinks Jane is dangerous. I told them what Amy said about her fight with Jane. We have some. We have to do something. We all agree that the situation my mother's was explosive. The drama will just escalate. Well, you can count on that. Alex said he wants to talk to his lawyer. Amy admits that his son is in a dangerous environment. Maybe he can get his son away from Amy. That's what I've been thinking. After all, Amy started the fight. She's fighting even though she's pregnant. Physical fights around the children should concern a judge. Maybe enough to remove Alex's son from the unsafe environment and an unfit mother and give him to Alex. My father said he still le uh, leaves Alex's son and my son in a dangerous situation while Alex waits for a judge to weigh in. How about insisting that my mother evict Jane from the house? Alex may still not be able to claim that it's a bad situation for his son. But if Jane's gone, at least our children will be out of danger. I said that if my mother evicts Jane, Jill will leave with Jane and take my son. Who knows where they'd end up? I don't want to wonder what happened with my boy. Maybe I should tell Amy that I'll let her, her but not her son, live with me. She has to give their son to Alex. Alex said Amy won't, won't get custody of their son, Alex, voluntarily. Uh, honestly, I told them, I'm inclined to just grab my son. Alex should do the same. Neither Jill and I or Alex and Amy have a custody agreement in place. We are our son's fathers. Instead of the husbands waiting to see the judge, we'll fix this. Uh, have the wise wait for a judge. Let the slowness of the legal system work for us for a change while everyone else's attorneys are writing briefs and talking endlessly to each other and we're waiting for a ruling. The kids will be with their fathers. And while Jill and Amy are waiting to get in front of a judge, the situation at my mother's will get worse and worse. They can't even keep it together with, with our kids there. When they're in the house together with, without babies to take care of, they'll have nothing to do but annoy each other more and more and more. More drama. More fights. Maybe we'll get lucky and Jill will take off with Jane and leave my son with me. 
My uncle said he agrees with me. Alex and I should just take the kids out of there. We should not let the prejudice against fathers keep us from protecting our kids. No court or agreement has given our wives custody of our children. Until that happens, our wives have no more legal rights to the kids than are the fathers. What's the worst the judge can do? Give the kids back to their mothers. In the meantime, we have our sons. My uncle says he's for taking the kids out of the nuthouse as soon as we can. Our support meeting was on Sunday. All of us agree that I should send an update to you and your viewers and get your input about what to do about our sons. I wrote this update after our support meeting. People in the comments requested an update, and uh, so here it is. He says, I don't expect to send you uh, an update anytime soon. I'm saying this now because we need advice from you and the community. I don't want Alex's son or my son in a dangerous situation. I don't want them around Jane. I don't want Jill taking out my kid with my son if my mother kicks Jane out. I know what a lawyer will tell Alex and me. Do not take the kids. Wait for a judge. F that. I plan to snatch my son. I think Alex is going to do the same. We're waiting to listen to anybody who has a better idea. Well, holy freaking crap. Well, bro... For once, I'm not going to share what I think because this is a turning into a gigantic freaking mess here. And from a legal standpoint, well, number one, I'm not an attorney. I'm not law enforcement. So I'm going to say this. What I do think you need, I get how afraid you are, what could happen, and how afraid for your, your boys, for, the, for the both of you and all that. But time has proven time again to listen to your lawyer. And again, I get... How fearful you are! So many different things happening, but I, you know, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to listen to your lawyer. So, guys in the comment section that are in law enforcement or lawyers or have experience in this, you can chime in what you think or weigh out the pros and cons and all these things. But I just don't want anything to happen that could then, in the long run, royally screw you on so many fronts, and any drastic action could happen there. So. I think the only thing advice I can give you is listen to your lawyer, listen to professional that don't let your fear and emotions take over. Although I understand them, you can't let that happen. That's what I think you should that's as far as I'm gonna go with what I think in the situation, because I'm not gonna be giving advice. The only advice I'd say is listen to your lawyers and go from there. So guys, get some advice here. But anyway, anyway, this these stories are crazy. Like I said, the streamers, they had stories like this, they would clean up. But anyhow, in the meantime, YouTube is uh, number one for these types of things. All right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. That give this guy a shout out. Give this guy some help. Some answers to any questions he may have. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.